pseudo hypoparathyroidism it is also called as end organ resistance to pth which means pth levels are normal or elevated but the pth is acting on its receptors but receptor is not showing any response on the target cell so the main culprit in the pseudo hypoparathyroidism is the pth receptor but not the parathyroid gland there is a reason pseudo hypoparathyroidism refers to the group of heterogeneous disorders defined by target organ like kidney as well as bone which is unresponsive to pth so pth resistance is characterized by hypocalcemia hyperphosphatemia as well as elevated pth concentrations so here let me talk about type 1 disease over here in patients with uh, pseudo hypoparathyroidism type 1 there is a diminished urinary cyclic adenosine monophosphate response to exogenous pth administration there are several subtypes of pseudo hypoparathyroidism type 1 caused by the mutations of gna s1 and a gene which is encoding the alpha subunit of g protein coupled to the pth receptor so these gene mutations resulting in the g protein inability to activate adenylate cyclase upon binding of pth to its receptor so the activation of adenylate cyclase is required for the signal transduction that produces the end organ response to the pth so failure of this process or the signal transduction results in unresponsive of the end organ this is what we are seeing in the type 1 and if we classify this type 1 once again into type 1a in the type 1a what happens is the pseudo hypoparathyroidism type 1a is a autosomal dominant disease with a loss of function mutation of gna s1 leading to an inability to activate adenylate cyclase when pth binds to its receptors so the maternal transmission of the mutation is required for the expression of php type 1a and this is very important for you to remember and the patients with php type 1a have constellation of findings known as all bright hereditary osteodystrophy which includes round faces short stature short fourth metacarpal bones obesity is a predominant feature what you will see here and also one can find subcutaneous calcifications and developmental delay all these are the constellation of symptoms what we will see in albright hereditary osteodystrophy so here in addition to that of the pth resistance of the renal tubules which leads to hyperphosphatemia and hypocalcemia and secondary hyperparathyroidism and hyperparathyroid bone disease like osteitis fibrosa cystica can be seen in long standing cases there's a reason the serum levels of parathyroid hormone is elevated rather than normal especially because of the hypocalcemic state in this condition and next type is the type 1b so patients with php type 1b disease have hypocalcemia but do not have the phenotypic abnormalities of uh, albright hereditary osteodystrophy so the pth resistance appear to be confined to the kidney only in this particular disorder there is a reason leading to only hypocalcemia but not other clinical manifestations so whenever hypocalcemia is seen automatically there will be hyperphosphatemia and whenever hypocalcemic state is present there should be a secondary hyperparathyroidism because of the feedback regulation and this rare autosomal dominant disorder appears to be caused by the methylation defects or the mutations that affect the regulatory elements of the gna s1 gene rather than mutations in the gna s1 itself this is the type 1b which is maternally transmitted and other than type 1a as well as 1b the rare form which is called as 1c so php type 1c refers to a subgroup of mutations that affect the coupling of the g protein to the pth receptor in this condition ability to stimulate adenylate cyclase remains intact but is no longer coupled to the binding of pth and its receptor there is a reason patients with php type 1c are usually phenotypically similar to those with the php type 1a 
and next is the type 2. So patients with PHP type 2 do not have features of all bright hereditary osteodystrophy like what we are seeing in the type 1. So they have normal or uh, even elevated urinary cyclic adenosine monophosphate levels in response to the top exogenous PTH administration which is a clear cut difference between type 1 as well as type 2 but without a concomitant increase in the phosphate excretion. So one genetic mechanism by which this has been documented to occur is with mutations of PRKAR1A gene which is a protein kinase cyclic AMP dependent regulatory type 1A alpha which is responsible for the development of type 2. And this particular gene typically encodes a catalytic subunit of the adenylate cyclase and incorporates a phenotype of the multiple hormone resistance with acrodisostosis. So this is what you need to know about type 2. So whatever may be the type, type 1A, 1B, 1C or type 2, the clinical manifestations are typically mimic hypocalcemic state. Because anyway this condition is more commonly seen in the children. Now we need to discuss about what are the causes of hypocalcemia in the children. So when we talk about all over the causes of hypocalcemia in the children, low PTH level can cause hypocalcemia that is hypoparathyroidism. It may be because of impaired synthesis or secretion of the PTH. If you see the genetic cause, it may be because of the Dijord syndrome and genetic mutations interfering with the production of the PTH like autosomal dominant as well as autosomal recessive conditions. HDR syndrome where you can see hypoparathyroidism, deafness and renal anomaly is a combination of these three called as HDR syndrome and mutations of the calcium sensing receptor like CASR and related proteins like autosomal dominant hypocalcemia is a condition which can also cause hypocalcemic state and mutations which are interfering with the parathyroid gland development like X-linked conditions can also cause hypocalcemic states. And not only all the genetic causes, there are like mitochondrial causes too which can cause hypocalcemia like uh, Melas syndrome, Syri syndrome, mitochondrial trifunctional protein deficiency can also cause hypocalcemia. Now what about the autoimmune cause of hypocalcemia? Autoimmune polyglandular syndrome type 1 which is called as APS1 can cause hypocalcemia and other causes include parathyroid or thyroid gland surgery infiltration of the parathyroid gland mainly by means of iron overload all these are the conditions which can cause hypocalcemia which is mainly associated with hypoparathyroidism. Now what about high PTH? High PTH is associated with hypovitaminosis D where there is an impaired vitamin D intake or synthesis because whenever there is a decreased uh, intake of vitamin D or deficiency of vitamin D or decreased synthesis of vitamin D whatever may be the condition where vitamin D concentration in the serum is decreased which in turn causes hypocalcemia and hypocalcemia is the one which stimulates the parathyroid gland to stimulate parathyroid hormone and this increased parathyroid hormone can cause hyperparathyroidism. So there will be insufficient dietary intake or insufficient exposure to the sun can also cause a decreased concentration of vitamin D in the body. And there will be a decreased gastrointestinal absorption or defects in the vitamin D metabolism or action. All these are the causes. And when we talk about liver disease particularly, including some of the drugs that increases cytochrome P450 activity, which accelerates the catabolism of the vitamin D to inactivate the metabolites like uh, anticonvulsants, isoniazid, rifampin. All these are the culprits which can cause vitamin D deficiency which in turn stimulates hyperparathyroidism. Renal disease can also cause hyperparathyroidism like vitamin D dependent rickets, 1-alpha hydroxylase deficiency previously known as uh, vitamin D dependent rickets type 1 or pseudo vitamin D deficient rickets and hereditary resistance to vitamin D can also be considered to be one of the important but rare cause previously it is known as vitamin D dependent rickets type 2. And other conditions include pseudo hypoparathyroidism which is also called as end organ resistance to PTH in which we have like type 1 as well as type 2, type 1 has type 1A, 1B as well as 1C and type 2 we don't have any other subtypes in this. And if you talk about the miscellaneous causes like hungry bone syndrome, osteoporosis, sepsis or acute severe illness, hyperphosphatemia, alkalosis, intravenous product with citrate or lactate, pancreatitis, fluoride poisoning and important drugs like bisphosphonates and uh, the drugs which can increase the calcium levels called as calcium memetics and other some of the important chemotherapeutic agents 
Can call.